Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Thrift Shopping and this is the second video in my beginner's guide series. In the last video I left off with my character needing to reach 950 battle power, so that's what I plan on showing you in this video. By the end of the video you are going to really start seeing some gains on your own characters and with very little Masetta investment. Before we begin the video, let's clarify what battle power is. Battle power, also known as BP, is a stat in the game that is calculated based off of your character's stats as well as your equipment, their enhancement level, augments, and item potentials. Remember this for later since everything we do in this video will involve improving on one or all of these things. Battle power is used as a requirement for future content and story quests, so it is an important stat to improve and I will be showing you how to boost your BP without breaking the bank. So you have four directions you can take with your character when it comes to improving battle power. You can first level up your character, which will net you about 14 battle power at your current level per level up. You can also complete cocoons and towers for skill points, and when you add these skill points to your main and subclass skill trees, this will add three battle power. You can upgrade your gear by enhancing and augmenting, and you can also unlock item potential levels on your weapon. Let's first talk about leveling up your character. Now that daily tasks are available on your account, you should definitely be doing these each day. They will net you a bunch of EXP for some very easy requirements. This will be a constant source of leveling as you are playing daily. I have a video covering my entire daily routine which includes daily tasks, gathering materials and resources, plus collecting alpha reactors and stellar fragments for daily Masetta. So definitely check out that video. Link will be down below in the description. After just a couple of dailies, I am already level 13 and went from 890 battle power to 916. Awesome! We are really close to the next story quest. Now since your only combat sector available currently is Mount Magnus and those monsters are level 5, I wouldn't stress about your character level 4 right now, so let's turn our attention to cocoons. By now you should have ran into a couple more cocoons and cleared them. Those skill points when used are giving you battle power. There is 20 total skill points you can earn in Alio, which is 60 battle power for each of your main class and subclass skill trees, which is a total of 120 battle power. Towers can be difficult since they are level 15 enemies, so don't hesitate to ask other players for assistance if you are struggling. As a reminder, there is an interactive map to all of the cocoon and tower locations that I will post in the description below. Awesome, so I completed two cocoons and a tower, which is six more skill points for each skill tree, and now I am really close to 950 BP. You may have already reached it by this point, but if not, let's go ahead and add some capsules to our gear. Adding augments is a crucial part of New Genesis. It is essentially the enhancements on your equipment and will affect your characters significantly. Each capsule has different stats and levels. For example, you may have two types of the same capsule, but one is a level one and the other is a level two capsule the latter being better stats. You may have also noticed that these capsules have a low success rate, some being 10% and others being as low as 8%. But don't stress, you can use up to 10 capsules in an augment attempt, so these percentages become 80 to 100%, and you can even further increase those percentages with additional items. I also want you to see the cost for adding augments. It's very cheap, only costing 100 Masetta per capsule used in an augment attempt. So this is an affordable option for you right now to get some instant battle power. At the current moment, I do not want to overwhelm you with what is a good or bad capsule. All that matters right now is that you succeed in adding capsules to your gear for extra battle power. The other great thing about the augment system is that you can replace augments whenever you'd like. 
so nothing you do right now is permanent. Another thing to remember is all of this gear is going to be replaced by the end of this video with much better gear. I will provide a link to an incredibly helpful website called Arcs Visiphone. They have information on practically anything in this game, which includes augments and the battle power they provide. And after some successful augmenting, the next story quest is unlocked. On my way over to the next story quest, I found another tower, so I went ahead and cleared that for an additional 4 skill points that I can use when I return to the class counter. This story quest is taking you through Vanford Laboratories, another combat sector. I actually had a bit of difficulty with this story quest on my character, so make sure you take it slow, be safe, and let the NPCs help you with defeating the enemies. And once you're done with the story quest, Vanford Labs is available for you to train in. Don't forget to grab the Ryuker, which is north of your current location. And while you're at that Ryuker, let me show you how room transferring works for finding more populated rooms. Essentially, you'll be restricting the search function to only look for rooms in the same sector only. This will filter to only rooms currently active in Vanford Labs. Next, you can click on this drop down menu and select order by vacancies. This is going to order all the rooms from least populated to most populated rooms being at the bottom. Now simply look for the most populated room you can enter for a better training experience. I would highly recommend spending about 30 minutes farming in Vanford Labs if you're level 14 or below. You have a chance to drop some units, weapons, and capsules that can be useful later. Plus, training with others and experiencing PSE bursts is an awesome time. While you're in the room with others, offer a party invitation to the other players. New Genesis gives additional EXP, Masetta, and Rare Drop rate buffs for being in a party. You can invite players that have a white name on the screen. This indicates that they are not in a party. A blue name indicates that they are in a party. You can also use the active recruitment setting in your party commands tab to allow anyone in the room to join your party. You can also use this function to join another player's party as long as this icon right here is displayed by their character. And don't forget your mag boost for an extra 20% rare drop rate while training, but you should have that already covered from your daily missions already completed earlier in the video. Wow, tons of loot. Now what to do with it? Well, you can store it if you find it valuable or convert it to cash. This function will give you the same value for the item that it would sell to at an NPC in Central City. This will be the primary way you handle undesirable items as you loot. My general rule of thumb for what to keep and what not to keep is to keep any weapons that have the EXP plus symbol. This was an added feature in the April 6 update so you do not see it on my screen, but these gold and silver prim weapons have an augment that increases the EXP given when used as a material item during enhancements. If you loot a weapon that has a high fixa, preferably level 3 or above, you can keep it to use or sell later when you have access to selling on the personal shop. And any units that are 4 star rarity will be a boost to your battle power, so I would hold on to those and sell any other units you get, and the same fixer rule would apply. You can sell quicker by holding the control button and clicking on all the items you wish to sell, and then you can left click on one of those items and select convert to cash. You can also shift and click, and then scroll down and shift click to an item further down to highlight everything in between those two selected items. And if you are using a controller, you can use the right trigger button, hold it, and then press down on your D-pad to highlight multiple items at the same time. This is a good time to remind you to lock all items you find valuable so that they cannot be accidentally sold. And let me explain fixes super fast. Basically, every piece of equipment has the chance to have a fixa skill on them when looted from an enemy. These skills cannot be put onto the gear, so they are highly coveted. If you find any gear with a fixa skill, 
it is better than a clean version of the same item. These fixes do not increase your battle power, but are impactful in regards to your offensive and defensive capabilities. And after about 30 minutes in Vanford Labs, I earned another level and a ton of Masetta and gear. This will be very useful really soon. Let's go ahead and turn in this story quest to Crawford and see what's next. Multi-weapons. Alright, for right now, all I am going to ask of you is to multi-weapon something that seems like a fun combination. Essentially what multi-weaponing is, is it's a system that allows two weapons to be merged into one and act as a single item. I have an entire video covering multi-weapons that I would suggest watching later to understand the entire system. Alright, so you should be level 14 or even level 15 now. This allows you to invest in pretty much any 4 star weapon for some instant battle power. So let's head over to the ARC's Visiphone website and look for what equipment is available for rifles. I would suggest looking at what 4 star series are available for your weapon as well. Well, the information I was just about to tell you about 4 star weapons being our go to choice would have made sense. But since the April 6th update of this year, Sega has dropped the level requirement of two five star series sets. So we are not going to be looking for four star weapons anymore. The weapons that you should be looking at are the Tempesta and Lumiere series. These are both elemental type weapons, but they are five star weapons. So their attack power is way higher than even the four star versions I was going to tell you. This is going to give you even more battle power when you do equip them, and these weapon series are relatively cheap. So double check in the ARC's Visiphone website to see which weapon series is available for your weapons. Now I know you're seeing me buy a forces for 9000 Masetta, but a Fixa Attack 3 weapon for this price is actually a steal. Once again, don't stress about looking for a Fixa weapon, but if there is one for just a little bit more, go ahead and get it. But I wouldn't spend any more than 10,000 Masetta for the weapon. And look at that, 51 battle power instantly. Let's talk about enhancing now that you have a 4 star weapon. I want to highlight just how much this is costing me to enhance. This is where most new players make their mistakes in the early game. Each material item used for an enhancement costs a static amount of Masetta, depending on the rarity of the base item. A 1 star weapon will cost 1000 Masetta per item used as a material item. This cost will go up to 2000 for a 2 star item, 3000 for a 3 star item, 4000 for a 4 star item, and so on. So the difficulty with the enhancement system during the early game is getting the most EXP out of every single material item used. So hold off on enhancing for right now. The new goal for you is to reach 1081 battle power so you can enter yellow triggers. This is where you are going to loot the material items for all of your gear enhancements. You may have looted some of these yellow triggers already from exploration and combat zones. Yellow triggers are the definitive best and most cost effective way to level up your character and enhance equipment. Each completion of a yellow trigger will net you around 35 to 40,000 EXP, which is the same experience as a daily mission, plus rewards you with a plus 20 enhanced gold and silver sword as well as a gold and silver armor. These are hands down the best enhancement fodder you will get for a long time. Let's first go and discover the yellow trigger portal so you can enter this later. It is located in West Alio on the end of this path. The requirement is 5 ale yellow triggers which you probably do not have, but don't fret. We have the personal shop. And lucky for us, these are pretty cheap. So go ahead and search for the trigger. You may have to type in the name of the trigger exactly as it is shown on screen for search results to appear. But look, 2000 and 3000 Masetta each. 
that means one run should be about 15,000 meseta. That sounds expensive right now, but it's really not. I would recommend buying until you have 5 triggers in your inventory. Now, unless you are at 1081 battle power, you need to reach 1081 battle power to enter these yellow triggers. You have the same options as we mentioned at the beginning of the video. You can level up in Vanford Labs to 15, you can complete more cocoons and towers for skill points, and you can add augments to all of your units and your new 4 star weapon for battle power. You should have no problems getting to 1081 battle power with all of these things done. Now our next job is to find some party members to join you for yellow triggers. There's a couple reasons why. Firstly, it will be much easier to clear the triggers with more players. And secondly, a full party will allow the opportunity for everyone to trade trigger runs. How triggers work in New Genesis is that the 5 yellow triggers will only be consumed from the party leader's inventory. This means that as long as everyone in the party takes leadership for one trigger run, every player will receive the rewards of 4 runs for the cost of only 5 yellow triggers. And in all honesty, if you have a group of players willing to continue trading runs after those initial 4 runs, go back to Central City and buy more yellow triggers. The enhancement gear you acquire here will be used on all of your endgame gear as well, so you might as well get the gear right now while you are leveling up your character. Wow, look at that, in just a little over 2 minutes, 40,000 EXP, plus all the enhancement fodder for our gear. For right now, put all of these in your storage, and once you are done running yellow triggers with your party, head back to Central City and prepare to enhance your gear. First off, let's look at the gold prim armors. You will see they have 3 augment slots available right off the bat. This is going to allow you to add even more capsules, which means more battle power. So equip 3 of these for right now. And you should have some silver prim armors as well. Go ahead and enhance one into each gold prim armor. This will give you some more defense and battle power. Do you see how much EXP you are getting for just one enhancement? That's because this gear has enhancement levels, and when you use gear with enhancement levels as material items, 50% of all experience contained within the item used as a material item is also transferred during the enhancement, and this would improve to 75% if you were using a material item that shared the same name as the base item during enhancement. And this is why yellow triggers are so important. You are now able to enhance your gear with these plus 20 weapons and units and save a bunch of meseta on enhancement costs. Do the same for your 4 star weapon too, but don't push your weapon to plus 40 enhancement. Use a few gold and silver prim swords for now and that's it. Save the rest for later when higher rarity weapons become available. You can always add more enhancement levels to your 4 star weapon as you need battle power. And now is the time I would highly recommend unlocking the first item potential of your 4 star weapon. This will give you a bunch of potency, which will improve your damage, and will also give you a unique skill as well. In my case, since I am using a Forces series weapon, I now have a barrier that grants damage resistance when I am at max HP. A perfect potential to have while going through story quests. And I haven't mentioned it, but by now I hope you have noticed that limit breaking, unlocking item potentials, and multi-weapon all require minerals, so be sure to do your daily mineral gathering. Once again, I will have a link to my dailies video down below. Don't catch yourself without enough minerals to upgrade your gear. Minerals reset daily, so if you cannot gather enough minerals to upgrade, you will have to wait for the next day. Let's continue on with the story quest. After all those yellow triggers and gear upgrades, you should feel like an actual raid boss, but this next quest can be difficult. Be safe, be smart, and you should be fine. 
but don't stress if you die a few times. My first time going through this story quest took me ages. And once you defeat the boss, you're done with all of the story quests in Alio. You are now eligible for Chapter 2 and the entrance to the Ritem region. And you now also have access to Rank 2 for all Alio combat sectors, which includes Level 15 monsters. Ignore those Rank 2 zones for now and head directly to Ritem. This is where you are going to make some serious gains with your characters. Clear all of the monsters and make your way to Ritem City. This is your new city hub of this region. You will meet Nadara and others which will be your new story quest givers. Nadara will direct you to Gaiden and he is going to give you a ton of incredible gear. Gaiden is going to give you a set of plus 39 evil coat weapons that match your main class that you have equipped as well as a plus 39 Cat Leia armor. Now the weapons, you are going to use those weapons as enhancement fodder for your Tempesta or Lumiere weapon that you previously purchased. If you did not purchase a Lumiere or Tempesta, you can go ahead and use either of these weapons. As for the Catlea armor, you are going to equip that, you're going to replace it over one of your gold prim armors. I would highly suggest pushing that Catlea armor to plus 40, that will unlock a fourth augment slot, and if you are using one of the evil coat weapons you just received, also enhance it to plus 40, so you get an extra augment slot there as well. And that is where we are going to stop for this video. But take a second and look back at your character. In just a day, literally less than 10 hours spent on my character making these videos for you, and you went from 1 star weapons and units to an enhanced and augmented set of high rarity gear. You have enhancement fodder sitting in your storage to be used on your endgame set. You met some new players on your ship, and you did all of this for less than 100,000 Masetta investment. That is incredible and is going to set you up for success moving into the next section of content. So in the next video, I will be showing you where to train and make Masetta in Ritem, plus we'll begin working on your 5 star equipment set which is our current endgame gear. As always guys, thank you so much for the support, I've been having a blast putting these videos together for anybody new or returning to the game, and I will see you all in the next Beginner's Guide video real soon.